Hi. I would like to talk about how to make good decisions tonight. Especially how to make good decisions in turn of the times. We live in turn of the times in German Zeitenwende. And turn of the times is times when we have a lot of uncertainty, when things happen that we did not expect. Maybe we didn't see these things in the last decades. And in these times, it is especially important to make good decisions. Let me start this with a decision situation that all of us know and that can be life-changing. And it looks like this. Imagine you're standing in front of this and need to make a choice. How would you do that? The fundamental principle of decision research is at time point of decision, you never have an ice cream in your mouth. Instead, you may go from one kind to another and imagine how good this will be. In other words, your imagined reward of chocolate ice cream should be precisely mimicking the real chocolate ice cream. If you imagine strawberry and decide for chocolate and taste the chocolate, you will experience a big mismatch and this was certainly not a good decision. In human brain, the orbitofrontal cortex, this is the area right above your eyes, creates an activity pattern when we imagine something as if we would actually experience this. And the more similar these two activity patterns were, the better decision maker was the participant. So if the imaginations are so important, and let me tell you, imagination of chocolate ice cream is not the only imagination that we have. We have imagination of many different things. The question is, where do they come from? Because we should actually have a very good imagination. One fundamental way of getting to the imaginations is learning. Let me give you an example. Imagine there's a new restaurant that opened in town, and you have no idea how good it is. So what you would do is to go there again and again until you have a very precise prediction of how good its food is. We call this learning and with this, by repeated experience, we can learn how to imagine things. We don't only learn about food and restaurants, we also learn about other people. Whether to trust one person or not, we learn it by repeated interaction and communication with this person. So there seems to be this imagination which is quite universal for us. However, the world is wide and complex and dynamic, so we cannot experience everything. And we have another very important mechanism to learn imaginations. We learn it from others. We may read books, we may watch what others are saying who've been to a destination we've never been to, who tried certain restaurants, and many different things. And as a social species, humans are very sensitive to other people's opinion, what other people do, and so on and so forth. And this is so essential that even infants and babies who don't have the ability to exchange by language can learn by social learning. Here you can see a father who is looking into the green, and what the baby does is the baby is looking at father's eyes and also looks into the green. The so-called joint attention has been thought 
to be one of a very basic form of learning. By looking at what his parent is looking to, the baby learns what is good, what is bad. And I was wondering whether we as adults still have this ability to learn by just looking at others' eyes without any words. So we ran a study, we called it I can tell you what to eat. And here we were showing some products that were directed, that were looked at by other people. Other products were not looked at by other people, they were ignored. And what we could see is that for the products, when this was attended by another person, you saw someone else looking at it, then people preferred this item, and they were willing to pay much more money for this item. So it seems to be that we still have this ability to do social learning, even without words. Now, we have not only imagination of ice cream and food and restaurants, as I said, we have also imagination of our job, our colleagues, our boss, wives and husbands of our partner, holiday destinations we've never been to, climate crisis we haven't experienced in the last decades in this, to this amount. We also have a specific imagination about other cultures, nations, religions. And we have very specific imagination of political opinions and politicians. And last but not least, we have a certain imagination of ourselves. How I am supposed to be, what kind of person I am. With all these different imaginations, we create a map of the world. This map we use to navigate through this world. And as I said at the beginning, hopefully this map is a very precise copy of the world. Because if there is a big mismatch, we will have a hard time navigating through this world with our map. Another important thing is that my map may look different from your map and from your map. So we all carry our little map of the imagination, a little picture of how outside the real world looks like. And they all, may all be different, slightly or more different from each other. So what happens when the world is in turn of the times, and it changes dynamically, and it brings a lot of uncertainty, and things are not as they used to be, but now they're all different. What happens here is my map, my old map, does not fit to it anymore. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. I was recently talking to my neighbor. I used to see him at the supermarket. I didn't see him for a while, so I was asking, what happened? I missed you. And he said, you know what? I stopped going to the supermarket. Why that? You know, they reorganized everything a year ago, which was true, they renovated, and the milk is not there where it was supposed to be, and even worse. Eggs are not next to the milk anymore. So they tore milk apart from eggs. He was furious, very, very frustrated. What do you do then? I mean, you need grocery. And he said, oh, I go to the other supermarket a bit far away. I said, mm-hmm. And how do you know where milk is there? Oh, I had to learn it, but that was OK. It was all new. So what do we learn from my neighbor? Two things. Mapping your old map onto the new supermarket is very painful. And the second thing, learning new things may be less painful if you're open. And if you imagine, OK, this is a new world. I have to navigate through this. So another important thing happens in turn of times when the world changes. Namely, each one of us differently adapt our map of imagination to this world. My neighbor adapts differently than I do. 
And all of you might also adapt differently to this new world, which means that we deviate from each other. So talking to each other may be frustrating because I insist on my milk to be here. And he's like, oh, I don't care. I, I like to have the milk over there. So not only do we have a mismatch between the real world and my map, but also among our old maps. And what can we do? Where are we going to? From the research in the field of neuroscience, we can come up with a couple of strategies how to cope with the situation in turn of the times. First of all, being curious and open. Remember, he liked to go to the new supermarket. He was curious and open. So if you don't see the milk where it was supposed to be according to my map, okay, well, then I'm gonna go and search for the milk. Where did they put it now? And also, it might help you a lot if you know that it is not the reality. It is not by law that milk should be there where your map tells you to, but maybe it is also okay to have another kind of reality and maps. Second, getting connected to others. As I told you in the beginning, social learning is one of the most powerful way of learning and updating our imagination for us humans. So in turn of times when things change rapidly and you feel like you don't understand anything, talking to others, exchanging how their map looks like, what they heard about it, what are your thoughts about it, this is my thought. And these getting connected would help us to update our maps a lot better, both to the reality as well as to our society. We conducted during the COVID-19 pandemic a study during a lockdown in Germany and Austria. This was really difficult times, as we all know, uh, where people were locked in their homes. And what we found was when people reported that they're especially lonely and they feel disconnected from others, this is when they also reported to have higher paranoid thoughts and also tended to believe more in conspiracy. Last but not least, let's not take things so serious. It seems to be that we are not having the reality in our mind, but it's just the map of the reality. So at the end of the day, my map might be wrong, or their map might be wrong. And I think a little bit sense of humor could help a lot, as we have shown in our study, that if you experience humor before a stressful situation, it has a massively protective effect on your stress perception. And with this, I would like to wish you all a lot of fun and good time with updating your map in turn of the times. Thank you very much.